So the title of, of this class is Echad and Reasons of Destruction. So you've already read Echad twice. You read it last night and you read it this morning. And who can tell me what Echad has to say about the reasons for destruction? We were bad, in other you know, words, we didn't keep the word of Hashem. Uh, no, but I mean, in, in, even in the text. Okay, I know it's frustrating, uh, but in fact, there's not a lot, a lot of information in Echa. It's the very general terms about the reasons of destruction. So how do we know about the reasons of destruction? But the, what I was trying to think of is Galtayim Dami Oni like we were exiled. Yeah, so what, what Pasuk is that? What Kenek? Eric Olive Pasuk Gimel. There's no, they don't give the Pasuk in front of the figures. Okay, so Eric Olive Yehuda has gone into exile because of misery and harsh oppression. That doesn't tell us the reason. It just tells us what the exile has brought. So if you want to be the inner style of meditation, just warning the thing, that's what's brought. We just feel bad about our situation. That's pretty much that That's pretty much that that is correct. Yes. If you read in the end, so you get the reasons. That's what you get the specific reasons why we went to go. But wouldn't we want to know, as we're reading that, uh, that why all this happened? They were lamenting and were crying over what happened. And wouldn't you want to know, like, what caused all this? Yeah, you're not getting any echad. You're not no, getting any echad? Well, I'm, I'm going to say there are hints in, in echad. And not only are there hints, but there are direct signs that lead us to either in the, in, in the Torah or Nevi'im. And then later on, in, uh, our rabbis will go back and uh, try and interpret and give several reasons why the destruction happened. But it's not so explicit. Uh, oh, it says Okay, so look to uh, to one Perek Aleph Pasuk Five. Ayu Sarea LeRosh Oyeveha Shal Ki Adonai Hoga Aro Peshaeha Ol Alea Halachu Shevi Nesad. Her enemies are now the masters. Her foes are at ease because the Lord has afflicted her for her many transgressions. So we have many transgressions. Does it give the transgressions? Again, in general term. 114. 1 8, rather. Right? Right? Jerusalem Jerusalem has greatly sinned. Therefore, she has become a mockery. Do we know what the sin is? No. Uh, 114, the same in that pit. The yoke of my offenses is bound fast, lashed tight by his hand. All right, the yoke of my offenses. Do you know what the offenses are? But we, but we know it's a yoke of offenses that that is that, that is tied around his neck, as if it's choking him because of the result of the oppression, as, re as a result of the government. No, uh, but, but when it's saying yo, it means that the main, the main uh, uh, oppression, the main offense that he did. That the goyim, that, that the, uh, those who exile Something us. heavy. Something yeah, heavy. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tightly fastened yoke around the neck. You know, when you're, when you're, when you're exiled in chains, they, they uh, they put a change around your neck. And they, they let you out. 
we have no concept of what the, the, the destruction was and what the exile was. The only thing that is in, in our uh, what is in our uh, in our consciousness is the Holocaust. It's the only thing we can compare it to. We have no comparison, of, uh, no other indication. We can't even imagine what it was like in the streets of Yushalayim upon the destruction of the Beit HaMikdash of Yushalayim going back 2,000 years. And Echa is really talking about what happened 586 uh, BCE. 586, the destruction of the first uh, Beit HaMikdash. We're going back 2,500 years. We have no idea of what, of what life was like in those times. Echa tries to present their picture of what it was like, but we can't even imagine it. It was so horrible. Uh, and yet, let's go. Let's get back because the lamentation is a, is about the the destruction, the effect it had on the people, on, on families, on on the nation, and on our uh, our consciousness that goes that has lasted for about 2,500 years that we're doing until. Uh, the most recent uh, events, uh, the formation of return to the state of Israel. So that's going to be part of my of my talk. Uh, let's go on because I want to just flesh out this idea a little bit. Uh, to go on one Perek Aleph Pasuk 18, Sadiku Adonai Kifihu Mariki. The Lord is, is in the right. He's a sadiq. For I have disobeyed him. The word mariti, mariti is, is a, a very heavy word. It's not just disobey. It's almost like rebellion. So, so far we have hayat. We have pesha. We have, we have, uh, uh, we have uh, rebellion. We have all these terms, general terms, but we really don't know exactly what they did. But we know from the effect of what they did, how severe the punishment was, that it had to be something serious. It's not just that they didn't, they didn't, uh, they didn't uh, do Wash their hands. So it's something, something simple. Um, let's go on to the next. Uh, <clears throat> let's see, there's one more at the end of the Perek. It says, Tavo kol ra'atam lefanecha ve'olel lamo ka'asher olal tali al pesha'ai. It would help if you uh, turn. But if you, if, you, if you still need the English, I'll still continue to translate. For my sighs are many, I'm sorry, uh, let all their wrongdoing come before you, talking about the other nations. The other nations, the 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 Conan, the, the lamenter, is saying now, all that you've done to me, now I want you to, I want you God to turn to other nations and do the same thing to them. Whatever you've done to me because of my Pesha I, because of my transgressions. Uh, I want you to do it to the other nations. So here we have an indication all, uh, as well that this pesha I, another term for transgre transgression, sin, transgression, rebellion, all these things. Now let's turn to the next pedic. I'm going to give you a few more details and then we'll get to the main point. Pedic uh, uh, 2, Pasuk uh, Yudalit. Your seers, your, prof your prophets, prophecy to you, delusion and folly. They did not expose your iniquity so as to restore your fortunes but prophecy to you, oracles of delusion 
and deception. This is Perek 2, Pasuk 14. So what would you think is the sin here? What's the transgression here? Nebiyashek, false prophets. What did they do? Hazula Shah Shah Vitafel. They didn't tell you your sins. Well, that's, that's the next part. Look below Gilu al Avonet. Why would a prophet want to reveal the, the sins of the nation? Because he'll be he'll be cast out. So they'll repent. So they'll repent. It's possible. If you don't know what you're doing wrong, it's the obligation of the leader of the of the of the nation, and those are the prophets, the religious leaders of the of the nation, to expose iniquity when something's gone wrong. So what did they do? Instead, the Nevi'im were false Nevi'im, and they were more concerned about uh, lining their pockets. So they would they would close an eye to iniquity. If there was injustice done and it paid off for them, or, or they wanted to make it uh, profitable for their supporter, then they would, they would tilt the judgment to them, and they wouldn't expose the iniquity. So here is an example of not only the regular person, but now we're talking about the religious leadership. So we're getting a sense now that something's gone wrong all the way up. Here's the Nevi'im. Hazula shav v'tafel. These are very strong words. Shav. We say, don't don't swear falsely. They 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 gave you false prophecies. They told you the wrong thing. They told you lies. The whole purpose of the neviim is to is to put the people on the straight path, to point out where they've gone wrong, where they're not behaving correctly to one another, and they failed in that in that responsibility. And. And Vayachazulach Masot Shav Umaduchim, delusion and deception. Masot Shav, Masa, the real translation of the word Masa is, is a load. And we offer the, the introduction to some of the Nevi'im is exactly Masa. Uh, instead of saying Vaydaber el Yirmiyahu, it says Masa. Uh, where I'm not exactly sure exactly where it is, but it's often referred to as a masa because the prophet has a burden to bear. He has he has a responsibility that he has to has to lead the people in the correct way. His visions, what he receives, the communication from God that he receives, is a load, a burden to him that he has to take off. Yet he has to fulfill his responsibility. So that's an indication of another thing that's gone wrong in the times of the cause, the cause of the destruction of the Beit HaMikdash. Now let's turn to um, chapter 3, Asuk 42. Skip that part, okay? Um, <clears throat> let's go to four six, because here we get more of the idea. Four six, Vaidal Avon Bat Ami Mehatat Sedon Haafuchat Chemoraga Velo Haluba Yadain Zaku Nezireha Michele. On six in particular, the guilt of my poor people exceeded the iniquity of Sedom, which was overthrown in a moment without a hand striking. So the comparison of what's going on in Israel, in Yushalayim, amongst the people is, is comparable to Sedom. The references to Sedom in the consciousness of the people, Sedom means the most evil city that was that was burned to the ground. And we re remember the association 
from the book of Bereshit, but it's also mentioned in the prophet Yeshayahu, in the first period of Yeshayahu, where he's exhorting the people to make Teshuvah, where he says, eventually, why are you, uh, why are you you're bringing of sacrifice to me? Why are you bringing all these sacrifices to me when, when you're doing the ritual, you're going through the ritual, but you're, you're not really going back and living righteous and just lives. So he compares the people to Sedom and Amura. Now once the people hear that Sedom and Amura, they automatically, they, they're, they're startled. Why are you comparing us to Sedom and Amura? We, to the people of Sedom and Amura, we feel, we feel that we're not so bad. But the prophet is saying, look, look what you're really doing. You're coming to the Bet Hamikdash, and you're bringing sacrifices, and you're praying to God, and like you're like you're good people. But then you're going back into your regular lives, and you're not treating the the widows or the orphans correctly. You're cheating in business. You're 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 not doing righteous things uh, in, in your daily lives. And now you're coming to me. You're really like Sodom and Amorah. That's what Sodom and Amorah did. And you're going to meet the same end that Sodom and Amorah uh, meets if you don't change your ways. So that's what's going on here also. So apparently they, they did Avonot, that they down Avon bat Ami mehatat Sedom. That the, the sins that, that my nation have, have done is worse, it's even greater than the sins of Sedom. Give you again an indication of the severity of the of the uh, of the sinning that was going on, and then um, <clears throat> the same chapter, Pasuk ten. Actually, it's, it starts a little bit the description of what the effect was in Yerushalayim to give you somewhat of a picture. Okay, 410. So we see the effect, the graphic description of, of what is going on in Yushalayim. With their own hands, tender-hearted women have cooked their children. Such became their fare in the disaster of my poor people. Can you imagine that? It's the most horrible uh, condition that people found themselves in. Again, I repeat that uh, we can't imagine these kinds of things. The only thing in our consciousness, and for those of us who somewhat remember uh, the the events of the Holocaust, or, or we are reminded about the events of the Holocaust, this is the, this is the most severe image of what was going on in Yerushalayim, uh, the condition of the punishment. Imagine, we, we would ask, how could Hashem allow this to happen? The Lord vented it all his fury, poured out his blazing wrath. He kindled a fire in Sion, which consumed its foundation. The kings of the earth did not believe. Everybody else could believe. They thought that Yerushalayim would never be destroyed. Nor any of the inhabitants of the world that foe or adversary could enter the gates of Yerushalayim. And yet, 
our own God destroyed her. It was for the sins of her prophets. Get the details something that was going on. The sins of her prophets, the Nevi'im. The iniquities of her priests, the Kohanim. Iniquities. What do we associate with the Kohanim? That they're all righteous people. They're working in the Beit HaMikdash. They dedicate their lives to the service of the people. And here they're doing iniquity. Who had shed, who had shed in her midst, in the midst of Yerushalayim, the blood of the just. Shefikutamim, murder. How did this happen? Anyone have any idea how this could happen? Was it, did they actually go around killing people? I would imagine, and it's somewhat detailed in, uh, in the Gemara, uh, because they, per they per perverted justice. That ends up in Shefikutamim. It often, it often happens when you go to when you go to the courts, and you think you can get justice there, and then one person you feel, you feel like the the court is corrupt, justice is corrupt, and then all of a sudden uh, the judgment is against you, and the impact it has on you could lead to to murder. So, but the blood is on the hands of the those who the corrupt just uh, justice. So it's not a direct thing. It's also the humiliation and the lack of trust in the whole system of our religion. So it's in the hands, again, of the prophets and the priests, the leadership. Finally, Pedic five, Pasuk Zain. Avotenu hateu ve'enam, ve'anachnu avonotehem savamu. Our fathers sinned and are no more, and we must bear their guilt. So we all know that Hashem has two seemingly contradictory qualities when we describe them. We, we say, El Dachom Hanun, El Hapayim, Rav Hesev Emet. He's slow to anger, he's compassionate uh, on one hand, and he's easy, he's willing to forgive. On the other hand, he, uh, he remembers the sin of Avot, Abanim, the sins of the fathers if the children continue in the ways of the fathers. So apparently what happened here is that Avotena Hatu and the reason why they are suffering with their Avonot is that they probably followed in the in the, in the ways of, of the fathers. So we we have we have now if you put the whole picture together, you can see what the reasons for the destruction were. But later on in um, later on in uh, in, the, in, the, in the Talmud and in, in rabbinic literature, we see that the reasons for the destruction. We all know the three reasons or four reasons. Three reasons. One is shefichutami murder, which you said. Gilud arayot, the sexual Im uh, immorality, and avodazara. Worshipping of idols. So we see the fourth one is that they didn't keep the Shemitah, which means uh, that they didn't have faith in God. Because with Shemitah, uh, you have to have the faith that after the seventh year, that you'll have, first of all, you'll have enough food generated for the this, this six years. And so you get by the seventh year, and then you have to wait another year until your plantings uh, come to fruition. But if you don't have that faith, it's like you're denying the the existence of God. Actually, the, the one that the Yemiah specifies is related to Shemitah with the Abadim. Right. The, the freeing of the slaves. They freed them and they took them all back. That was the... Right. So it's social injustice. Yeah. That the way you treat your slaves, they they um, they, they, uh, they, they were afraid that they that they would lose out <laughs> from the slaves by freeing them. Um, 
But I just want to back up a little bit. So you think, I want to go back to what Echad does. Echad is five perakim. The first perak is a, a, the personification of Yerushalayim as a woman. A woman who has seen a lot of suffering. A great, uh, let's, let's put it this way, uh, a beautiful city, a grand city, now is destroyed. So we see these contrasts. And we see a woman, the classic woman who's lamenting, who's suffering, is the woman who's uh, the, the widow, the, um, the, uh, the mother who has to deal with strange and extraordinary circumstances. The, the mother image is the mother of compassion. She's the one who gives birth to the children. And the, the womb is called the Yibul Rechem. She, Rechem is, has the same root as the word Rahamim. And we see the image of the woman of Yerushalayim compared to Yerushalayim, the city. We, uh, what is evoked is compassion. So we see in the, in the first, in the first pedic, we see how the, the effect of the destruction. And this, we see this in, uh, in chapters 2, and then in, in, chapter, th in chapter 4, we see the same, same ideas. Um, however, there's a change in chapter 3. If you go to the beginning of chapter 3, Now the perspective has changed. Now we're in the mind of the man. I am the man who has known affliction under the rod of his wrath. Me, he drove on and on in unrelieved darkness. We are brought in chapter 3 into the very scene of the destruction and its post effects as if we're witnessing this uh, the effects as if we're there after the class take a chance another chance at reading chapter 3 and see how different it is from the other four chapters and I want to pay particular attention Chapter 3. Pasuk 22. Does anyone want another uh, image? And there's a shift here. Hastea Adonai Kilotamu. The kindness of the Lord has not ended. His mercies are not spent. What does that tell you? Imagine, now you've seen the destruction of your shalim. You're comparing it to a woman who's gone through suffering, the most incredible suffering. You've seen the image of women having to do extraordinary things to get food. Right? Now, what do you see? What does this tell you? Haster Hashem Lotanu. The kindness of the Lord has not ended. What kindness? Right. This is not kind. <laughs> With all this that happened, don't worry. Don't worry. Hashem still has chesed. Lotanu. Kilochalu Rahama. And we say this on Yom Kippur, Kilotanu. Now, Siri Hot. It's never, his compassion is never ending. Imagine. They are renewed every morning. Familiar words? Every morning, what's renewed? Every morning, there's renewal of faith trust in God 
that his right, his 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 compassion, his kindness is never ending. No matter what disasters we see, we all know that God has has infinite compassion. But we have to do the right thing. The Lord is my portion. I say with full heart, therefore will I hope in him. There's still hope in this man. We've, we've seen the destruction through his eyes, and now he's taking us in another direction. He says, wait a minute, even though I've seen this, let's, let's still appeal to God. And that's what this lament is about. The lament is to show how sad he is, how sad we all are. That we look what look what we're going through. Please God, now help us. We've done wrong. We've sinned. We've transgressed. We've done all kinds of iniquities. We've our, our, our leaders have, have gone awry. Our prophets are false prophets. Our priests who were supposed to educate us aren't educating us properly. And so on. Please God, we know you are endlessly compassionate. Help us. The nefesh tidrashinu, and here you know you notice that all of echa, except for the last pair, which has 22 pesukim, all the other prakim are go, going according to a prospects A, B, C, D, different formations. Here we get up to the word, the, the letter tet, and we have tov adonai lekovah. With all this, all this suffering and destruction that happened. What, what we have, we have tov. Tov Adonai. God will be good to those who reach out to Him and trust in Him. The nefesh, to the soul who seeks Him. Tov, ve'achil ve'duman de'chuat Adonai. It is good to wait patiently till rescue comes from the Lord. The chuat Hashem, to rescue. Tov la'gever. Here we have the word gever, bringing us back to the original Pasuk of the, uh, the first Pasuk of Perek Gimel. Tov la gever ki sa ol mine orav. It is good for a man when young to bear a yoke. Yeshev badad veidom ki natal alav. Let him sit alone and be patient when he has laid it upon him. Yeshev badad. The word badad also is a reflection resonating back to the first uh, Pasuk of the uh, of uh, of the there we're looking at the city of Yerushalayim, how it's alone and desolate amongst all the nations. It used to be known throughout the all throughout the old nations, but now it's Badad alone. It's it's severed from all connection. It's no longer a city. But over here if you share by that veidom, if you sit by alone by yourself, and veidom, and you, you you're, you're concentrating and you're and, and, and you're contemplating things and you're recognizing that God is there, then then uh, you'll, you'll maybe there is hope. But why would you put this parak in the middle then? Like if it's so I'm going to tell you what Yael uh, Ziegler said. Oh, I, I heard her. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is a fantastic uh, interpretation. Uh, if you see if you see it as an um, envelope or uh, two exterior panels, pedic alf and bed, and uh, dalit and head, which speak about destruction, and at the center is hope. It's almost like in order to get to the hope, you have to peel away the messages of the suffering and destruction and how we deal with it. Peel away, because at, at, just to know at the center, there is this hope if we, if we do the right thing. Does that make sense? No, the interpretation? <laughs> I like it. But it's as if, it's as if you have to penetrate what you see on the outside. You have to penetrate and see beyond or through the destruction, through what's happening in the world, and see the possibilities of redemption. Okay, so 
Uh, let's go to the end, Pinnock 5. Pasuk 19. Thank you. She can say it's all right. You're missing the end. <laughs> Just one pastor to say, don't worry. Even though there are jackals prow prowling uh, on the Beit HaMikdash property, as we see at the end of Masech HaMakot, you see jackals, a terrible scene of the rabbis seeing this. Uh, this is after the destruction of the second temple. It says, Atam Adonai Yeonam Teshev Yisachar Lidor Vador this is the hope of the future. We see it right now. The children. God bless them. God, you'll always you'll always be enthroned forever. Your throne endures through the through through the ages. God will always be there, reigning. Why have you forgotten us? Still going back so early, forsaken us all the time. Take us back, O oh Lord, and let us come back. So just For truly you have rejected us, fearly rage against us, take us back. So there's a there's a big problem here. Because if you look, ki in for truly you have rejected us, merely raged against us. We don't want to end on this, what could be a sad note. So we repeat, that we, 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 we end on a positive note because we do know, Hashem, God will re return us. We ask God to take the first move, to make the first move. Please, God, help us and bring us back. And God, and, 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 and if he does that, then Ashuba, then we will be him. Isn't that, isn't that kind of bold? Shouldn't it be the opposite? So actually, this is a combination of two pesukim. One which says, Ashivenu Hashem, that God, you should do the first step. And God answers back. What do you mean? You, you're the ones who did wrong. You have to come back to me. Now, if you did wrong, what kind of God do you want? We want this God, don't we? Because we're human beings. Uh, we have, we're weak. We falter. We need help every step of the way. This is the ultimate message of Echa. But the last pasuk here, Mas, Mas Tano, it's an admittance of wrong, which is a very big first step anyway. Yes. They're acknowledging that they were rejected. Because, because they did wrong. Right. So that's, yes. that, that's it. true. But they're not that's the key step before Ashivim. I mean, right. Yeah. But it is the words about us that you, you were disgusted by, by us. And there's a notion, is that we say every day, uh, I've never reached, I'll never reach, God tells, tells the prophet, I'll never reach the point where I'm so, uh, that I'm disgusted by you, that I will completely destroy you. We'll never, we'll never reach that point. So let's hope that in the coming days, and uh, weeks, and months, that we strive to return to God, Nashuba to God, and you're going to see God is going to help us make this Teshuvah, and God is going to help us make the Teshuvah, and it's going to help us return even more and more and get closer and closer to God. That's why we're